And welcome guys. Uh, today's project we have uh, the AMT uh, Star Trek Klingon Bird of Prey in 1 3 50th scale. Now I built this model many years ago. Um, not much has changed from it since then, uh, but there have been some changes in this newer release. Now this has been out for a while and been meaning to do this for a while. So just take a quick look at it. The uh, older version that I had that I originally built, I believe, only came in one configuration with the kind of wings down attack mode. And this one, you get uh, parts to build three different configurations. You can do the uh, cruise mode, you can do the attack mode, and you can do the landing mode. So you just kind of look at the instructions. You got the, the different ones the cruise where the wings are straight out, attack mode where down. And the landing mode where their wings are uh, high up and it includes part for parts for landing gear. So my plan on this one is to do the cruise mode. Uh, I think that would be a nice one uh, to do. Uh, going forward, I think I may just do some basic lighting. I'm unsure how much lighting I'm going to do. Uh, I've seen uh, people go all out and light all the windows and um, different type of light, the weapons and stuff like that. What I was thinking basically is lighting the front uh, weapons area, the torpedo launcher, and the rear engines, and maybe just keeping it pretty simple on this uh, particular build. Uh, we'll just kind of see. Uh, there's a lot of great videos of this build, and so I've been watching a few of them, uh, picking up some uh, tips and uh, hints on how to build this one. So that would be a fun build. Uh, just kind of looking at the parts. Uh, some of it has some pretty significant flashing. So definitely there's going to be some cleanup. Uh, one gun is not too bad, but these other guns have a pretty significant flashing all around it. And that's kind of the way it is throughout. And so uh, not any major modifications. Again, I've seen a lot of people uh, exchange these uh, barrels out of the different weapons with metal tubing. I think once we clean them up, it won't look too bad. So that's really my plan for all this. So I'm just going to get started. Uh, initially, uh, we're going to clean it and kind of get the gist of uh, what kind of lighting I want to do with it. And uh, we'll go from there. So let's get started. All right, so here we are a little bit into the build. I've assembled the entire wing section. And just uh, as you can tell, I've added in some styrene, some strip styrene in different sections and parts. This adds some detail, but mostly to cover up seam lines and gaps where we put the model together. And this we had some, uh, you could have used putty or things of that nature. Uh, I think this gives it a little bit extra detail. And I think once we get it all painted, it'll blend in nicely. So I've done that on both the wings, adding that detail to it. A little bit more to do here and there. And then on the uh, main body, I've uh, attached this underside. And again, you can see where I've added in some strip siring just to kind of cover up a big gap that was between all these pieces. And as you can see, I've added in some black. Well, first, I added in a couple coats of black acrylic paint and then uh, some white. And I'm still going to do probably another coat of white. And this is for light blocking purposes. I have drilled out the windows, as, as you can see here, on the side, and then again on the main body. And I did that by just taking a small drill bit and drilling a series of holes um, along the lines, and then taking my a very sharp exacto knife and then just trying to cut and clean it off, and then to open up those different windows. As you can see right here, I did have a little bit of an accident and cut out and damaged the main section so I took a little piece of styrene plastic and glued in there and I think we got that fixed pretty nicely. A little bit more cleanup to do on that but that's where we're going. So I have, um, we are going to try to light the inside of the bridge area and the back body area and of course we're going to be lighting the engines and still working out the details of how, we going, how we're going to do that. We did have this uh, engine piece here. This was transparent, a clear transparent plastic. I did a little bit of silver painting but then I went over with a matte clear coat and that's why it now has a frosted look. 
I don't want it to be transparent, but also um, I'm going to be painting the inside of this red and yellow. So this matte uh, finish on here will help that paint adhere to it. I've had some issues with this uh, transparent plastic's pretty slick, so the airbrush paint often doesn't want to go on smoothly. So I think that'll help um, attach it to it. And of course that will go on the back of the ship. So that's where we're at, and we'll just keep moving on. All right, so I've gotten most of my lighting in place. Now, I'm not the best at organizing my lights. I just try to get it all jammed in there to where it doesn't show. I have a one three miller white LED right here, and that'll do most of the lighting for these front windows in here. I have some uh, three different white LEDs right here. Uh, this middle one's uh, placed directly underneath this red piece of sprue that I've put in here. So when it's lit, We'll have a little red light and we'll also light up these windows right here. I also have some red sprue right here that they won't be very bright, but you will see a little bit of light coming down here. I've noticed that in some of the uh, pictures I've seen that there are some red lights right there. So that's the top half and the uh, bottom section. We also have a uh, red five millimeter LED that's going to be coming out the nose there and we'll put on the nose cone later. We have another white. LED right here again with some little red sprue and I'll light that bottom section right there. And then coming down we have our connector and that's put into place and that's where also be our stand. The original connecting point for the stand was right there. I widened it out and we placed this uh, power um, connector right here and we'll have all the wires connected there. So when we uh, finish our stand uh, all the power will run up through the pole that also holds the model. Uh, moving on to the rear engine lighting. Uh, we have three uh, red flickering LEDs. They're three millimeter LEDs and I have uh, when I first put it on here and kind of test it with the um, engine section over I was getting too much of a spotlight effect so what I did is I had this uh, some type of canopy. I'm not sure why it was off. I put a matte coat of spray paint on, a clear matte, and frosted it all up, and that diffuses the light. So when I do go to put this on, uh, we get a nice bright effect in there without any kind of spotlight effect. So that's the lighting we have going on, and I'm about to seal it all up, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, I got all everything hooked up here. This is this a quick test. I have my uh, connector plugged in, so all the power is coming from external, I'm running up. I have all my wires connected. And I'm just checking all my engines. So my engine lights flickering. I have my cabin lights on. Torpedo light is on. I have those light. Everything's working pretty good. Everything looks like it's on. Are working good. And I'm just going to get some shrink tubing. I still have to uh, shrink up. And then I'll be trying to squeeze all those wires in and get the body sealed up. All right, so I have the main body all together. Um, turned out pretty good. Just working on a lot of little uh, gaps and seam lines. You can tell where I've added in some, um, just some styrene to kind of add in, make some detail up here around the uh, bridge section, there was a pretty significant seam or gap, so I added in some very fine styrene, and it's actually square styrene, but it's very fine and it flex, it's, uh, flexes pretty easy, so I just kind of glued bits and pieces and flexed it around and got it into shape doing it that way. Uh, masked over the engine part, we're getting ready to prime it. Uh, again, we've added in some detail, covered in some gaps. Of course, we have our plug in here. Make sure that all of our lighting is working. And looking good. Now what I have to do now is uh, I'm going to take some liquid latex and, or masking fluid and I'm going to cover over all our lighting areas. Now the open sections are just going to be left open. A little paint will get inside but it's not going to be enough to block the lights or anything. We'll come back later and put in some canopy glue or some window maker and fill those in. But I need to cover in these uh, red lights. I need to put a little masking fluid on that. 
So when we uh, do our base coats, our primers and stuff, it won't get painted over. Uh, just to show you the, uh, I went ahead and started working on some of the paint on the wings. And then here's our base coat. Of course I did primer over it, just a regular grade primer. And this is from an airbrush paint. And this is the Vallejo Airs uh, DE Green. And it's 71009. Now it is a lighter color. I'm going with, uh, I chose to go with the lighter kind of pattern on this or a lighter paint scheme to really bring out the details. And if you look uh, a little bit of research, there's a lot of different schemes, uh, darker, lighters, brighter ones. I'm going with kind of a light green, but the uh, time we weather it and do washes and all the other paint, is, it's going to darken up some. Uh, but overall, I'm really happy with that green color. I think it's really going to pop once we get it done and bring out the weathering and other details. I painted over the uh, engine grills or cooling grills, whatever, they, whatever those are called, using uh, Model Master Aluminum. I just used a paintbrush with that to get that on there. So I'm going to work on that. I'm going to get this all painted up, and we'll come back once that's done. Alright, so this a little update of where we're at. And I can see that I've completed a lot of the detail painting on the main body of uh, the bird prey. Uh, what, once I finish the, all the little detail painting, the different colors I have on here, I put a clear coat and I just use this uh, satin crystal clear from Krylon. And I put that on there for two reasons. Uh, one reason is to protect all the detail work that I put on so I won't uh, rub off easily. Uh, but too, you can tell that I've added a wash and to get in and start bringing out some of the detail. And that clear coat helps the wash just to kind of easily go over the rest of the model and fall in the crevices and then wipe it off. And I just, this is this a homemade wash and I just used some acrylic paint. This is some burnt sienna, kind of a reddish brown color. Mix that in a bowl with a little bit of this uh, cheap window cleaner until I get like a watery consistency consistency and then I just brush it on with a little paint paintbrush give it a little time to kind of dry into the edges and corners and then wipe off as much as you want to wipe off now I did uh, one pass with the burnt sienna wash I think I'm going to try doing a darker wash to mix in the colors on this so we'll have a nice and weathered looking uh, bird of prey you can see on the wing here uh, this has not received the uh, clear coat yet I've added in the details uh, you will need some microsol to help these detail. De I'm sorry, the decals help the decals to set. I think I said details, uh, especially these decals on the uh, wingtips by the guns. There's a lot of little edges right here, and if you, you're really going to need some of that microsol to help the decal to kind of set in and form to those ridges. And so, just working on that. I'm about to give this a shot of this clear coat. And then we'll let that dry and then we'll do a wash on this. So I'm just going to work on the washes on the main body and then we'll come back once we do all that. Alright guys, so here we are for our completed uh, Klingon Bird of Prey, the uh, AMT 1350th scale. Uh, very pleased with how it turned out. Uh, I think the colors uh, really made it pop. I'm really glad I went with the light green. I'll go over all the products uh, I used in just a moment, but we're just going to recap the build and take a closer look at it. And uh, just made a simple base port for right now. I may change that in the future. And we just turn it on so we have our flickering engine lights. I'm very pleased with that effect. Let's see if I can get that up closer for you. So we have a nice flickering effect. We've got our windows all lit up, little spotlights. We've got our bridge section windows. Side. and of course we have our torpedo launcher lit up and see if I can take a look at the uh, underneath we have our, our wing section as you can see we have some lights down there underneath the main body we have another little spotlight here and I'll post some pictures at the end of the video to get a better look at it. So, overall, very happy with the project. It turned out really nice. Uh, the, the build was pretty fun, pretty straightforward. It, um, it's not bad for any uh, older AMT kit that's been recast. There was a uh, bit of flashing that we had to take care of. The fit is a little tricky, but not too bad. 
and uh, you just be prepared to sell uh, some of the uh, seam lines you're going to have. Again, I used, instead of using putty, I used strips of styrene, especially up here in the nose section. I think it really, uh, let me see if I can get you a better, better look. Instead of trying to fill it up with putty, we used the uh, little strip of styrene to kind of come in here. Actually, I think it turned out really nice. This kind of gives it extra detail and really fits in with the model. I don't think it really glares out as an attempt. Uh, but we did similar things on these, uh, uh, the wing edges were connected. We put some strips of styrene to cover up the seams. And we did a, a piece here that we kind of sanded into shape, gave it a little bit of a round shape. And I, I really like it. I think it covered the scene well. And it's, now that it's painted, it's blended over nicely. So I'm just going to recap the products I used and uh, we'll be all done. Hey guys, let's uh, recap all of our products used. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, some gray primer from our Solium, a satin clear coat from Krylon. We have some styrene. We have our uh, colors used for the body. Again, we use the uh, DE green. That's 71009 for the base coat. I'm glad we went with that light green. I think the model really pops having that light green and then putting the accent colors. Uh, we used some uh, light green and some sick green for the accents colors. We also mixed in a little bit of gray with uh, few of the other ones on there. We have some aluminum for Model Masters that was brushed on to the radiators in the back here. A weathering kit to kind of add in some details. We have a couple different ones with some rust and some black and soot that we use in different places just to kind of make scorch marks. Uh, we cover it all with a matte varnish from Vallejo to dull it all down. And a little gray accents. The part up front here I think is part of the deflector possibly. I'm not sure. Uh, it was done with a burnt red and we used a flat red for underneath the uh, wings, the red sections underneath the wings. Of course we had the microsolver decals, had a couple different glues, had some extra thin glue and some regular glue, uh, one from Tamiya, one from testers. And then we have our craft paints we used for the washes that we made, some burnt sienna, black and gray, mix them up to window cleaner. So that wraps up the build. I hope you've enjoyed it and until next time we'll see you.